Virgo, this is Raina. This is a video called, Can This Relationship Be Healed? So this is particularly for those people in troubled relationships, as well as those who are estranged from their partner, maybe they're separated, or you've broken up and you'd like to get back together with them. The only disclaimer is that this video is not intended to imply that if um, there has been physical or emotional abuse, that that is something that can just be easily remedied by, oh, I'm sorry, because those tend to be issues that are deeply entrenched. Sometimes, as I have said in other, um, in other videos in this series, is that something like infidelity, which seems to be a very common reason for estrangement, and also very serious. I'm not saying it's not a serious problem, but sometimes it can be situational. Sometimes it can be, you know, the person got drunk and they were in a vulnerable place. And, or maybe they lost their job and they felt bad about themselves and they wanted somebody to make them feel, I mean, it's not an excuse, but it's an explanation. There's a difference, you know, and people do recover from infidelity. It's it's not something that everyone will accept. And I'm not saying that if you have been cheated on that you have to um, take somebody back. No way. I would never say something like that. But what I'm saying is I'm trying to look at what kind of issues tend to pull people apart. It's usually money <laughs> because people have different attitudes about how to s spend money, what to spend it on maybe whether or not to have kids or the stress of children, addictions, and infidelity, right? So anyway, I'm going to be using, <clears throat> excuse me, two decks here. Um, this is the, the deck I used, I think it was last month for the love readings. And I'm just going to be picking one card from this deck for the shadow work for you to work on, which is basically looking at what area you still need healing uh, in within yourself in order to kind of stop this pattern because there's always you know if you if you take things superficially it's easy to blame the other person for bad behavior and not see that you are always going to be part of this and it's not it's excuse me it's not blaming the victim it's looking at things from a holistic point of view and per, about personal responsibility any time that we look at a situation and say oh my god i you know why why are they doing this to me it may seem logical to ask that question but it's incredibly disempowering because it makes you out to be just totally um, not participating in the dynamic of what's happening. I'm just going to grab my vitamin C drink. <clears throat> okay, put this over to the side. And um, so I'm just picking one of these cards and then I'm going to also pick a... Um, a card from the just the the Morgan Greer deck this is going to be I did I say pick a card I'm actually doing a the the spread itself okay and I'm shuffling this right now and um, yeah so the, these are the two decks I'm going to use Okay. <laughs> That's a card I keep getting over and over again, but because this is a special theme within a love reading, that should not be so surprising. I'm just going to cut one of these cards. 
Then pick this one. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. That's an interesting show card. Oh, <laughs> and I'm going to, this time I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to, sometimes when I get the tower, I pick an additional card. I'm not going to do that this time. <clears throat> okay. Uh, where can I put this stack? Over here. Okay, so I'm going to start by looking at the three cards here. It doesn't matter what order I talk about them that deal with the situation at hand. We have the Nine of Cups. I just alluded to addiction. This could be somebody. Um, my feeling is that you may have. Um, let me start with this card. <laughs> this is a card of patience. Um, <clears throat> it's not surprisingly, this is connected to earth energy. The Seven of Pentacles is waiting for your harvest to come in. In a marital or the equivalent situation, it would be trying trying to see if this is ever going to actually gel, get better. So with this as one of the, we have two cards here, and um, this is the, the card of uh, tradition, conformity, marriage. It's almost like you have become sad because you've been trying to wait for this person that you're with to get it together. And there are two things that I would focus on. One is alcoholism or similar types of addiction with the nine of cups we're talking about self-indulgent behavior could be gambling maybe in some cases we do have a couple of pentacles around but um it's like you feel that you have to be in this situation because it's your the teachings of your church the 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 culture that you were raised in, the conditioning that you were given, and you feel this sense of grief. That's what this card is about. Feeling this sense of like, um, you're not getting your needs met. Um, it is with addiction, um, especially because this is more common than people I think talk about. And especially I think with alcohol, because alcohol, although I will say, I'll, let me just say, and this is the United States, Marijuana legislation is, it seems like it's really kind of ratcheting up. So it's becoming legal in, in many areas of the country. And I expect to see similar things with that too, especially because people say, well, marijuana is less dangerous than alcohol. The point is, it's not about, uh, that's one uh, aspect of these kinds of, of, of uh, substance abuse. But it's abuse when the person is using it in an excessive way. And people don't really understand how it, how it adversely impacts relationships. Because that person is tuning out. So you're not on the same frequency. You're not connecting. You're not, they're not really there for you. And it's a, it's a, it feels, and I think it is, a form of abandonment doesn't make them an evil person, doesn't mean that the relationship has to end. But when people may, you know, what I was saying about alcohol is it's so accepted in, I don't know about, you know, some places in the world, I think it's illegal even, but, um, but where, you know, in the United States, it's considered the social thing that people do. And so people in relationships might not know that, that it's, that the person is abusing alcohol, okay? Um, but I get two cards with that that could indicate that specifically this is an alcohol situation. Um, likewise, it, let me just say this. The Nine of Cups could be anything that the person is doing excessively, including if they are having um, illicit relationships. And... 
it's like you're waiting that, you know, this is about you being patient, trying to, maybe trying to believe their promises and they just keep letting you down. Okay, and that's where that Five of Cups comes in because you feel like the sense of dejection. Now let's look at the, oh, well, I should say this. Now this is the spiritual message for you. And I'm so glad it was a pentacles because that relates to your particular element of earth. A lot of the people watching this will be women. It's not that I have to assign gender to this, but just to even customize it more, it's like saying, you know, you can do fine all by yourself. You are a strong person and you have the ability, and this is talking about practical matters. So this is money and your career. You have it together and you can, you're able to support yourself. So you don't need this person in your life. Like if you are a woman, like maybe 50 or, or 100 years ago where women you know, typically we're very dependent on their spouse. So it's reminding you that you have options, okay? And that you have um, a lot of inner, you know, I, I said inner strength because this is really about the, to me, this is more of the resources um, on a practical level to be able to live your life. Um, but... Why did I say inner resources? I have to go with that as well. I would say that um, the the queen is a feminine energy and the pentacles are as well. The earth element is feminine. So that is talking about inner fortitude. And Virgo people tend to be very strong. Now, neurotic, yes, I can say that I have the moon in, in Virgo. But nonetheless, very... Um, very strong um, and very, I think one of the reasons why Virgo people are so strong is because they tend to lead very clean lifestyles. Now, yeah, um, River Phoenix was a Virgo and he died of a heroin overdose, didn't he? I, I mean, or whatever. Um, uh, we know that we can't broad brush, but in general, Virgo people tend to be very health oriented and um, organized and that's why they rule the sixth house that deals with those types of issues and work oriented so um, disciplined you may be just fine the problem is you probably love this person and you want to help you know that's Virgo's thing is I want to help I want to be of help well you can you know it's a very fine line between help and enable enabling somebody and that's something um, I've recommended this book before I'll say it again codependent no more by Melody Beatty just to me a wonderful resource um, let's look at the shadow work before anything else knight of cups the the knight on the white horse or is it the white knight on the horse <laughs> um, no, it's the knight on the white, in well, whatever. Um, it's it's um, the the point of the 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 archetype of the the knight in shining armor is that the person is he does he have a armor on? Yeah, he does. Is that? we're looking at idealism the perfect partner and you know harlequin romance is made a fortune by doing that with virgo you are a sign that sees the flaws okay and you know it's like it's almost like you can see the flaws bef before you can see the virtues of somebody and this can be used by you as a, a way, an excuse to keep your distance, to avoid intimacy, to, to preserve your freedom and not have to, because nobody, you know, measures up that perfectionist, perfectionistic attitude. And um, 
what people don't know is that you turn that on yourself as well. So that's where the paradox comes in, where you don't feel worthy, and yet nobody else is too. Remember that book, it was called I'm Okay, You're Okay. Well, your philosophy is I'm not okay and you're not okay. <laughs> and um, it's... Um, the, 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 as shadow work, I would say the Knight of Cups could be one of two things. Now, your opposite sign is Pisces, the ruler of the 12th house, which deals with illusion, fantasy, this kind of thing. This kind of thinking is right up a Pisces person's alley. So that Neptunian, um, overly idealistic, bordering, bordering on delusional attitude can rub off on you because... Actually, the, the signs that oppose one another, they can have some of those same qualities. And so that perfectionism is actually a worldly version of N Neptune's um, otherworldly fantasies. So you may be looking for that person that's perfect in the flesh and nobody measures up. And that can cause you to feel a sense of dissatisfaction with whoever you're with. And that's what you need to work on. You need to stop needing things to be perfect all the time. And in my own life, what I have found is that this sense of freedom, when I can break out of that, because even when I was making videos, I said, how can I make videos that aren't perfect? And of course, eventually you you have to choose because you're not going to get there and um there are people who probably would would rather stop you know making videos or if if whatever it is that you do that you're trying to accomplish that you would rather quit than to go ahead and be imperfect and for, to have other people think that you're imperfect and you have to get beyond that in every aspect of life um, it's just so important and it's freeing. It really is. That doesn't mean being shoddy, but somewhere in between is a happy medium. And, and that way you can see, see, when you see other people's flaws and you accept them, Virgo, then you can accept yourself as well and you can forgive yourself for not being perfect. But if you hold somebody up to this impossible ideal and, um, and then... Um, are the same way towards yourself um, that creates a lot of um, stress and 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 you won't get what you want the other th the other piece in this too is that when um, people are dealing with a partner who has some kind of compulsive behavior like I believe there's such a thing as sex addiction and um, it might not be a physical um, malady, but it still is, is an obsessive thought. It's kind of like OCD. Um, and I also believe, you know, that th these other addictions, it it's amazing that somebody who's a perfectionist might gravitate towards somebody like that. But there again comes in this idea of you being of service to others. And this is kind of what Pisces also has this desire to Pisces it's more just like love and accept for you it's serve and when you have somebody who may even be incapacitated that you are that willing servant to try to help them but at, but while you're doing that you may be destroying yourself and that's what I'm kind of getting at the advice um, or it could be what's coming in is, is represented by the four of once this could be a happy home restored for some reason. Maybe um, you do work on yourself, um, including, in some cases, uh, you. some people may decide to separate from their partner because you realize that you are contributing to their um, problem by enabling it in some way, and you realize that they have to work it out for themselves, that you can't save them from themselves, but that eventually they see the light and, and you can get back together. For other people, this is something that you need to keep in the, keep your eyes on the prize, that this is what you want. And 
every action that you take saying, is this getting me closer to this or is this getting me further away? <clears throat> the outcome is the tower. So for those people who are like the, the page of pentacles, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the seven of pentacles, that they are just um, being patient, but I'm putting that in air quotes, that they're really tolerating bad behavior indefinitely. The universe will step in, according to this card. Now, this is a, a general reading, obviously. Um, and they will clear the air. They will, something will happen that forces you to make a change in your life. And the problem with that is that you can't control that change. You have to accept whatever explodes. Okay. Whereas you could take action today to determine how you want things to play out. But some people are too afraid to do that and they will wait for that event to occur. And it could be, what could it be? It could be something that forces, it's a catalyst, it forces change, um, a revelation occurs that um, you can't deny um, if the partner has been cheating and maybe you thought all that was going on was they, they drank too much, but you find out they're actually having an affair. Or you find out that you don't, they cleaned out your bank account. Um, they've been making excuses about where the money has gone and you find out they have a gambling addiction. You know, these kind of things. I'm focusing on addiction because the Nine of Cups is, it's actually a wish fulfillment card. It's a positive card typically, but we're looking at problems and relationships in, in that particular um, part of the spread. So I'm looking at it more in the the shadow aspect of what that could mean because it's like too much of a good thing. And um, you may even be worried about somebody's health in some cases. And the Nine of Cups could mean that they, have, you know, they're um, eating a diet that you think is really impacting their health in a negative way. And it's, it's very sad to you because you can see the deterioration of their health. And this could be a wake-up call a heart attack, uh, you know, a stroke or something like that. Not saying that that's going to happen. I'm saying that um, the tower card is there to shake things up. And I'm not going to shy away from that anymore because I personally think that it's a good thing. It's all good, okay? And, um, okay. <laughs> Um, I hope you enjoyed this, Virgo, and um, if you like a private reading, I, in my love readings, I focus on your astrological chart more than the, the tarot. This is a medium. The tarot is a medium that is well-suited for you to because it's very open-ended and it can um, apply to a large amount of people while your natal chart is specific to you and to your journey through this lifetime. So um, I should start saying that because personally, um, the tarot um, is very symbolic. And so people worry, and I, I've been one of those people that used to worry about um, when I would watch other readers and, oh my God, the, tar the tower card or something like that. But it's really um, symbolizing sudden shifts. It could be an aha moment even that you have regarding your relationship. And what it does is, is it, it sets you free. Okay. And so that you're not in that delusion anymore or that stagnant place. Okay. Well, uh, a link to my website is below. It's rainandmoonastrology.com. And I wish you all the best in 2017. I will be posting December's normal, regular love readings, um, in the near future too, just to let you know. Okay, take care. Bye.